Hello, welcome to this video where we start to enter into the area of integration applications. We want to be able to use integrals and all of our techniques that we've learned to, to go calculate something. First up on the list, volume. And what's the goal? Use integration, use second semester calculus to find volume. There will be four different methods. Cross sections. This video is dedicated to the concept behind cross sections. Okay, there'll be subsequent videos where we look at disk method and washer method and cylindrical shells. The first three fit into a category where the action is happening to create the volume is a slicing. The last three fall into a category where the action that's happening to create the volume is revolving around an axis. And it turns out that disk and washer fit in both categories. It's both a revolving around an axis and a slicing at the same time. All right, this video is all about the concept behind cross sections. All right, great. So what we have here is a loaf of a pound cake. And we want to find the volume of that loaf of pound cake. What's the goal? Well, you know, we want to be able to find this volume by cutting it into many pieces. What we're going to do is find the volume of each piece and then add them up. Have the volume of the entire shape. What we're going to do is when we slice, picture that being a plane, uh, what we have is an actual cylinder. Whenever you have a shape that is uh that has uh, a matching shape on the other side, and then it's three-dimensional where there's this, this connection between those two bases, what you have is a cylinder, and you can find the volume of a cylinder by finding the area of the base and multiplying by the height. The base of each cylinder is going to be what we call a cross-section, and we'll have to figure out a way to represent the area of that cross-section. This particular shape would be very difficult to find the area of, but we're going to stick to basic geometric shapes. Squares and circles and triangles have a formula based on where X is, based on um, that shape. And so we're going to develop the formula for area of a bunch of different shapes, which you already know from geometry class. And we're going to find out how it ties into calculus. Okay. All right, great. So what we're going to do is to have the picture from before, and we have the volume of each cylinder. Okay. And we're going to represent in the following manner. So A of X is that formula that represents the area of that base. But we're going to change as we move from left to right. The X is going to change. And so what we say is, well, if we, if we make this slice and we have a small thickness there, delta X, then we have to pick some place to evaluate the area formula. Do we do left end point, right end point? Do we do midpoint? Somewhere we have to evaluate the formula. And so what this xi star is, is just some place, let's say it's in the middle. And so that'll be the place where we plug into the formula, the area formula, and get the area of that particular slice. It could be xi minus one, which is the left end point. It could be xi, which is the right end point. Or it could be just some place generically called xi star. Okay. And so this particular picture has uh, eight different slices, all of varying different shapes. Some of them look kind of similar, but each one has its own area formula. And so we want to be able to uh, calculate that area formula and multiply it by the delta x, which we're going to try to keep the same throughout. Okay. So we can, uh, in this picture, there's eight, but we, we can, you know, have this formula, which is representative of adding up eight different items as a summation. Volume equals the summation i equals one to n. N is generically any any number you want, a finite number. Um, at first, for approximation sake, and then the two guys are multiplying the area of the base times the height. Okay, but we're going to find out that that's going to be an approximation that's not going to be very accurate. So how do we get a better approximation? We use more slices. And we're going to let the number of slices go to infinity, making the thickness essentially be infinitesimally small. 
basically it's going to be infinitely many slices and then we'll have the exact volume and what we're looking at is a Riemann sum as n goes to infinity you have infinitely many slices and you have the exact volume this is the definition of integration right here where you have a limit of a Riemann sum replace that with an integral symbol and so it's all important that we find the area of the shape and we just integrate that area well, it isn't officially integrating area okay what you're doing is there's area but we're multiplying it by dx don't forget whenever you draw an integral symbol there's a dx symbol its partner and the dx actually is a is a, is a dimension here so we have three dimensions we have the area which is two dimensional and then dx is the third dimension to give us the three dimensional volume okay so on the next subsequent slides we're going to calculate a bunch of formulas okay and so um if you get a chance i want you to go to uh, a website where they have animations that i can't do for you very good website there um you'll get to see uh, here are three different pictures from this website this is, these aren't mine uh, from this website here are three different pictures of actual volumes found by cross sections here the cross sections are squares and they're stacked on top of each other in the pyramid here the cross sections are semicircles, uh, half of a circle, and they 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 um they they fit this curve which looks like y equals root x. And we can actually do these problems here, and then um but this this website has nice animations with the different colors and it helps you to visualize more than I can do by hand by drawing. Uh, these this this last one here is um, equilateral triangles coming out of the base. So in each of the problems, what we're going to have is the base being some region in the xy plane and we'll be then having some shape coming out of the base so we need to know how to find the area of a semicircle the area of a square the area of an equilateral triangle so we'll go through it quickly on the next few slides i know you know how to find the area of a square circle equilateral triangle semicircle isosceles right triangle maybe we could take that isosceles right triangle and turn it so that the base um, is actually the hypotenuse and not one of the legs okay and so let's go find some formulas for these guys where s gonna, is going to represent the slice along the base okay so uh, what if the slices are squares so then the area is just going to be s squared no doubt about it. um what if the slices are circles then the area um if, if the radius is s then the area is pi s squared this actually ends up being what we use for disk method. What about if the area is uh, half of that, where the diameter runs along the base? The S is the diameter and it runs along the base. So the radius is an S this time, like it was before. Now the radius is S over 2. But you know the formula for the area of a square, I mean, area of a circle, sorry. And you take half of that, 1 half pi r squared. And if you work this out, you'll be able to get the formula, square the s and square the 2, you'll get pi over 8s squared. So you can collect these and put them in a formula sheet. So you can be re you know, ready to grab them if you need them. You could develop them on the fly for sure, but it's best if you just have them already right there in front of you. Okay, great. What about these isosceles right triangles? It's just half of a square, right? One base is s, the other, well, one half the base times the height. So the base is s and the height is s. So we have one half of s squared. Now take this isosceles and turn it on its side where the base is the hypot or the S is the um, hypotenuse that's running along the base. And we're going to get a more complicated formula. Um, we don't know these legs. Let's generically call them X and use Pythagorean theorem. The fact that X squared plus X squared is S squared. So two of those X squared equals S squared. And therefore we'd have that X squared is s squared over 2. So we're good. The base is x and the height is x. And so we have an s squared over 2. Um, s over root 2 once we take the square root. So we have uh, basically 1 half of x squared again, right? s over root 2 and s over root 2 is just s squared over 4. Okay, great. All right, here comes a difficult one. So we have an equilateral triangle. All sides are length S. Area of any triangle is one half the base times the height. To get the height, we have to drop down a perpendicular. But there's something special about 
that drop down perpendicular in an equilateral triangle, it's also a bisector. It's not only is it perpendicular, it's a perpendicular bisector. It'll cut that base in half. We'll have S over 2 on both sides. Something else special about an equilateral triangle is that all angles are 60 degrees. And so um, those two base angles are definitely 60. And what happens is that in the equilateral triangle, the top angle is also 60. It gets broken up. It gets bisected. So we have 30 and 30. And that's a special right triangle. You know all about that triangle. It's a 30, 60, 90 right triangle where they have a certain relationship amongst the sides. The leg that's opposite the 30 is X. The leg that's opposite the 60 is that guy X times root 3. And the hypotenuse is just double X. So we have everything we need to find the area. The base is S. We need to find the height. Well, according to the 30, 60, 90, if you just focus on the right triangle there, it's that guy who's X. And so you take that guy, S over 2, and you multiply by rad 3. That'll give you the height. So you're ready. One half the base times the height. One half of S times S squared. I'm sorry, S over 2 root 3. Multiply that out. And you get S squared over 4 root 3. Maybe put the root 3 over 4 first and call it root 3 over 4 S squared. Okay, this video is getting kind of long. I'm sorry. But I just want you to be able to develop all the formulas so that you can not have to worry about developing them on the fly. And so if your cross sections are squares, you know the formula. If they're, if they're circles, you know the formula. If they're, um, if they're semicircles, you know the formula. If you have isosceles triangles where the leg is running along the base. If you have isosceles triangle where the hypotenuse is running along the base. If you have an equilateral triangle, then we know exactly the area. And this last guy, we didn't have to uh, derive, but um, if you have an isosceles triangle where the, um, the height is H and the S is the, uh, the third side that's not the same, then uh, just one half the base times the height. All right, so in subsequent videos, we will do examples. I'll probably do two examples per video, um, and we will dive into how, you know, to apply these problems. Right now, we just... Right now, how do we apply these concepts? Right now, we just look at the concept of cross sections. It's all about finding the area formula and integrating it with respect to x. If you're if you're going um, perpendicular to the x-axis, we're gonna find out though that we could do some also with respect to y. And so this ends this video. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Uh, comment down below, or um, you could definitely uh, reach out to me. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.